Hey everyone, Ace of Clay here. Welcome back to my channel. But if you're new here, I'm a sculptor and every week I make a new sculpture. So be sure to like and subscribe so that you don't miss any future videos. And I really hope you enjoy your stay. In today's video, we're going back into the monster universe and classic horror characters. And I'm making Mr. Hyde from Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. This is another highly requested sculpture. I've been doing a lot of these lately, but you guys have been asking for Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde for the longest time, and I always thought that I would make both of them in one video, but it just didn't work out that way, and I went with the more exciting, fun character, in my opinion at least. If you're not familiar with Mr. Hyde, he is from the Gothic novella written by Robert Louis Stevenson called The Strange Case of Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. It's about a London legal practitioner named Gabriel John Utterson who investigates strange occurrences between his old friend, Dr. Henry Jekyll, and the evil Edward Hyde. The novella's impact is such that it has become a part of the language, with the phrase Jekyll and Hyde entering the vernacular to refer to people with an unpredictably dual nature. Outwardly good, but shockingly evil. And I just remember being introduced to this character after watching The Page Master when I was little. I remember they had a whole segment on Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde, and it just scared the crap out of me, but at the same time, I absolutely loved it, because that's the kind of kid that I was. And ever since then, he's always been one of my top favorite horror characters, so if you want to see me bring them to life, then let's get started. Alright, let's make this guy. The first step is, of course, to create the armature, which is the underlying structure for our sculpture. I'm using this aluminum wire, and I drilled two holes into that wooden plaque so that I can insert the wire. Now I'm adding another piece of wire to create the arms, and I'm going to secure this with some floral wire. And as always, all of the materials and tools that I use in this video are listed in the description box below, along with my affiliate links if you want to purchase anything. Now I'm just going to bulk out the torso with some Super Sculpey Ultralight. This step can also be done with aluminum foil, I just prefer the ultralight because it gives me more control. Then I added that skewer for the neck, adding a little bit more clay, like so. And then we're going to bake this. And once it's baked and completely cooled down, it's ready for our final layer of clay. I'm using Super Sculpey Original for this project. And of course, to get these nice even sheets of clay, I rolled it through my pasta maker on the thickest setting. Now I'm just going to bring out that hump that I want in his back a little bit more with some more clay, blend that in, and then we're going to work our way down to the legs. I'm just using a snake of clay and pressing it onto the wire. Now I'm going to make the ankles a little slimmer just because I want it to look like his pants are rolled up at the bottom and those are his socks. So then we can do that detail later. Now for my favorite part, I'm going to add some folds and wrinkles to the pants. I'm just taking these tiny snakes of clay and blending them in with the rest of the surface. Once the pants are looking pretty good, I'm going to work my way down to the shoes. And I'm just making the basic shape of the shoe like that and then blending the back of the foot in with the front just sort of working around that end of the skewer there and then I'm going to start going in with this tool here to create the sole and then can't forget to detail those socks really quick and then we're going to go in and add some details to the shoes starting with the tongue Now we're going to finish off that shoe with some tiny little laces and then go ahead and create the cuff on the bottom of the pants. And after finishing the other leg off camera, let's work our way up to the button up shirt. I'm just going to create the part where the shirt meets in the front where the buttons will go. And then we're going to add some more snakes of clay to create some wrinkles where the buttons will be pulling. After finishing the other side of his shirt off camera, I'm going to go ahead and start the collar. This is just a flattened snake of clay that I'm cutting to size, and then I'm going to blend the bottom edge in with the rest of the shirt, and then I'm going to fold over the collar. Once the front of his shirt is at a good point, it's time to add the top of the pants. This is another flattened snake of clay that I'm adding like so, and I'm blending the bottom edge in with the rest of the pants. And there we go. It's looking pretty good. 
Now let's finish off some details, add some buttons, and move on to the next step. Now I'm going to give him a little belt. This is another flattened snake of clay that's a little smaller, and I'm just adding it around the waist, adding the buckle, and then the excess belt, like so. And of course, we can't forget the belt loops. Now I'm going to brush the entire surface with clay softener to remove fingerprints and get him ready for a bake. And once he's baked and completely cooled down, it's time for the next step, which is to give him a nice sort of trench coat. So I'm just adding a little bit of bacon bond, taking this sheet of clay that I cut to the shape that I want. And I'm just adding it over his shoulders, sort of like a cape, like that. And then we're going to go ahead and do the same thing for the pieces in the front. And once the front of the coat is looking okay, we're going to go ahead and add the lapels. And of course I cut these out from another sheet of clay and made them very jaggedy and raggedy on the edges. Now we're going to go ahead and sculpt the arms, just using these snakes of clay, adding it to the wire, blending everything in really nice. And then we're going to go ahead and add a couple of wrinkles too, and then work our way to the hands. And these hands are going to be a little different than my typical process. I'm going to use the excess wire at the end of each arm to start each one. And here I'm adding the clay for the palm. And then I used my pliers to shape out the fingers. And then I'm going to add each other finger individually with another piece of wire like that. And he's going to have this sort of like reaching pose where each finger is separate. Now we're going to finish off his sleeve with a little cuff. And of course, some snakes of clay for folds and wrinkles. And now as a final detail on this guy's clothes, I'm going to go ahead and give him a tie that's sort of pushed over to the side. Once his body is looking pretty good, we're going to start his head, which was my favorite part of this project. I'm just starting with a ball of aluminum foil, covering that in clay, and then starting the eye sockets with my large ball stylus. I also added a skewer into the back so I can hold on to that while I'm sculpting the rest of the face. Just deepening the eye sockets with a smaller ball stylus, adding the eyeballs, like so. And now, of course, we got to give him an exaggerated brow bone. Now, for the next step, we're going to give him a pretty big chin. Here I'm using my spoon tool to press out the mouth area. And then I'm going to use this spatula tool to open his mouth. I'm going to give him this sort of menacing grin. Now before I get any further with anything else, we're going to go ahead and finish the nose off. And I'm using my spoon tool to shape out that sort of oval piece of clay and then just shape it into a nose. <laughs> and now it's time for his teeth. I want to give him pointy triangular teeth and this step was a little tricky so the footage kind of sucks. Um, I didn't pre-bake the teeth or anything. I probably should have because it would have been way easier to just poke them into his mouth, but I was, I guess, lazy and put them in while they were uncured, which was a little trickier, but it still worked out in the end. It just took a little longer. Honestly, if I would have pre-baked them, it would have been way better. Now we're going to go ahead and 
finish those off there and then of course give him some ears and then there was a previous step where i gave him those cheekbones and once everything is looking good we're going to brush him with clay softener and bake him we're going to bake the head and his body and we'll connect them later and once they're baked and completely cooled down it's time to start his hair i'm going to use these little sheets of clay cut out the shape that i want and then add a little bit of bacon bond to his scalp just to secure the connection a little bit more and then we're going to press on the hair like so have a little bit on either side of his head i want his hair to be extremely stylized we're just sort of blending it in on each side of his neck and then we're going to attach his head like so with a little bit of bacon bond of course and then i'm going to add little tiny pieces of floral wire to add some sort of flyaways in his hair i'm just going to press them upwards into the pieces of hair and then once all those are on he's looking pretty good and we're going to move our way onto his hat we're going to start with the brim and just cut out this circle shape pressing the edges to make them less harsh and of course adding some little nicks and tears in there to match the rest of his outfit and then for the top part of his hat i'm going to cover a piece of aluminum foil with more clay roll it out like that got this nice cylindrical shape attach it to the brim with some bacon bond and then blend that in a little bit and then we'll finish detailing it after it's on his head And once I'm done texturing his hat, he's ready for his final bake. And once he's baked and completely cooled down, it's time for paint. All of the paints that I use in this video are folk art brand matte acrylics. We're going to start with his shirt, this nice, I believe this color is called boulder, this nice grayish beige color here. And we're going to start with that all over the surface and then once that's dry we're going to add a darker gray wash to the surface and brush off the excess so that all of that darker gray gets into the nooks and crannies and then to brighten the shirt a little bit more i'm going to dry brush some of that lighter gray on top again and then we're going to move our way onto the coat using this nice dark brown shade that i made by mixing dove gray brown and pure black Once his coat is completely covered and dry, I'm going to dry brush some lighter gray onto the surface to bring out the details. And now we're gonna paint his pants brown. I want these to stand out against the coat so I didn't opt for like a black or a color that would match the coat too closely. I want you to be able to see his legs, so going in with this brown color. And we're gonna make his skin green because why not? So we're starting with this nice pale green color going over the entire surface of all of his exposed skin. And then to paint the inside of his mouth, I rolled some watered down black paint around inside there with a fine paintbrush. Now we're going in and painting his teeth. This color is golden ochre mixed with warm white. Once everything is nice and dry, I'm going to go over the entire surface of his skin with some watered down darker green to get into all of those nooks and crannies. This is a wash again, and I'm going to brush off the excess with my fingertips and a paper towel. And then for the next step, we're going to start his hair. I want to give him jet black hair, so we're going to paint it pure black. I'm going to get it in there and make sure I don't mess up any of the parts that I just finished. And now to give this guy a soul, we're painting his eyes warm white. And using the end of my paintbrush, we're gonna give him some pupils and irises. 
Now he's alive, and let's go and start painting that hat. And for the final step, we're going to paint the base and stick him on. And he's done! Mr. Hyde is complete. I had so much fun creating this guy. Let me know what you think of him in the comments and which horror or monster character you want to see me make next. And that's a wrap. I really hope you like my version of Mr. Hyde. I think he came out really nice. It has been so long since I've made another character like this and I think he's gonna look great next to the Bride of Frankenstein, the Wolfman, the zombie, and all these other Monster Universe characters that I've made. I'm so glad that I kind of like went back to my roots and how I started my channel with this guy. I know a lot of you have been waiting for me to do something like this again and I'm so glad that I did. The timing could not have been better and I really hope you like them. So let me know what you think in the comments. And as always, thank you so, so much for watching my videos and being here. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and then follow me on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter, at Ace of Clay. I'm also on TikTok, so check me out there, and I will see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.